Hello and welcome. I'm Desi Arnaz, professional investor and recovering landlord. I want to thank you guys so much for showing up today. I want to welcome you here. Today, I'm going to be showing you a case study of one of the mortgage notes that I personally own. And I'm going to show you how I have used mortgage notes to transition from being a landlord and property flipper to being a note investor and private lender. I think you're going to find it intriguing. I know that it is life changing if you embrace it like I have and like I've seen so many other people do. And I'm going to use a case study to actually show you how that happens. Now, uh, if you're currently a landlord or if you're thinking about becoming a landlord, then this is really a must see message because this puts you on, in my opinion, the right side of the table when it comes to being a real estate investor. So let's take a look at the case study. I call this case study the case of the deadbeat daughter. You'll see in a minute why I call it the case of the deadbeat daughter. It's got nothing to do with my personal daughter, but you'll understand as we move forward through this case study. At the end of the day, I'm going to show you guys how mortgage notes make such an incredible investment opportunity. And you're going to learn for yourself if it's right for you. So let's talk about the deadbeat daughter. This story is the story of a man that was retiring and sold his house to a daughter because what he wanted to do was to have a monthly cash flow coming in during his retirement. And he figured that if he could get an extra 400 bucks a month coming in during retirement, that would be all he needed. And so he structured a deal with his youngest daughter. He said, look, this house is valued at $130,000 according to the appraisal, but I'll sell you this house for $66,000 with no money down. Think about that for a minute. Now, that's a pretty sweet deal for his daughter. Wouldn't you think? He also said, what we'll do is we'll put it on a 30 year term, just like the banks. I'll charge you 6% interest. And your monthly payment will only be $396.83. Now, that's a great payment, especially considering that this house would easily rent for $1,000 a month. So she was getting a really good deal. As a matter of fact, I call it a sweetheart of a deal. In order to protect his position, Dad did something really smart. He put it in writing. He had his daughter sign a promissory note and a mortgage. Now, in case you don't know what those are, a promissory note is simply an IOU. Basically, it's a document that says, Dad, I owe you $66,000. I agree to pay you back over the next 30 years, $396.83 at a rate of 6%. And the mortgage document basically says, Dad, if I don't stick to my promise, you can take the house. If you've ever signed a mortgage, in essence, that's what the mortgage says. If you don't pay the debt, the lender can take the real estate as a full payment. Okay, so that's what his daughter signed with him. Good move. So let's take a look. Four years down the line, how do things look? Well, let's take a look. Four years down the line, the sweetheart deal became a heartbreak deal because his daughter was taking advantage of her dad, in my opinion. Here's what happened. Out of the 48 payments she was supposed to make over four years, she only paid 26 times. She did not pay 22 months. And dad didn't know what to do about it. At that time, she owed him $8,800 in back payments. I mean, think about that. Remember now, his whole goal was to subsidize his retirement account by that $400 a month. Well, for the last almost two years, she hadn't paid him. And uh, so he was kind of like, not sure what to do. He didn't want to foreclose and take the house from his daughter and kick her out in the street, but he had to do something. So his attorney told him, look, did you know that you can actually sell your mortgage to someone else? And that way you don't have to deal with it. And so he decided that he would look into that. And that's how he reached out to me. Here's his situation. At the time that he reached out to me, he was still owed $64,500 plus $8,800 in 
back payments. So he was still owed quite a bit of money. And he wasn't receiving that $400 a month that he had hoped to receive to subsidize his retirement. So he was in a bad way. His daughter even made it worse because as he was pressing her to pay him, she literally shut him out of her life and refused to talk to him or her mother. That is why I label her the deadbeat. Okay? I don't know if that's definition of deadbeat according to your definition, but according to my definition, she's a deadbeat. So dad decided he would sell his position in that mortgage. Now, if you don't know this, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but mortgages get sold by lenders all the time. As a matter of fact, far more mortgages are sold than actual houses are sold. Far more, probably four or five times more mortgages are sold every day than actual houses are sold in America. So dad decided to sell his mortgage. I took a look at it. I liked what I saw. I didn't like the fact that she hadn't paid in almost two years, but you know, I was okay with that. He explained to me the whole situation about how his daughter was living in the house. She was making her payments and she got married and I don't, he doesn't know what happened, but somehow after she got married, her and her husband stopped paying. And he said that he talked to her, he begged with her, he pleaded with her, and now she wouldn't even speak to him anymore. And so he asked me if I wanted to buy the note. I negotiated with him and I agreed to pay him $47,500 to sign the mortgage and the promissory note over to me. He did that. I wired him $47,500 and the deal was done. Now at that point, guess what? His daughter now owes me $64,500 plus $8,800 in back payments. I literally stepped into his shoes. And so I reached out to his daughter. And before I did, I called dad. I said, dad, look, you need to know something. She's not my daughter. Okay. And he said, I understand what you're saying, Desi. And I can't help her with that. I said, okay, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. She's not my daughter. And so I reached out to her and I said, look, there's a new sheriff in town and I ain't your daddy. Okay. You need to start paying your payment. And guess what? <laughs> She started paying her payment. Is that a surprise? Not to me. I've seen this type of scenario before. She started paying her payments. Now, what does that mean? Take a look at this for a second. I bought a $64,000 loan balance for $47,500. I also bought $8,800 in arrearages for that same uh, purchase price. I mean, isn't that incredible? The day I bought that mortgage, his daughter owed me more than $70,000. And I only paid $47,500 for that, to get into that position. That is powerful. Think about that. If you've ever bought real estate, how do you get equity in real estate? Well, there's only two ways. One is the, uh, the down payment that you put when you purchase the property gives you equity in that property. The other is you hold on to that real estate until the price goes up above what you paid for it. And then you have equity. The day I bought this mortgage, I had more than $20,000 in equity right there. In other words, if she had sold that house that day, she would have had to pay me $70,000 plus from the sale of the property. Okay, also in a really strong position because of what I'm about to share with you. And this, this, pay attention, this is the power of note investing. Okay, when I bought that mortgage note and I became the, the lender on that real estate, there's only three possible outcomes. One is the daughter will pay me like she's supposed to, or she will pay me early by selling the house or refinancing, or she won't pay me. That's it. One of those three things is gonna happen. Those are the only three possible outcomes. So let's, say, let's examine each of those outcomes. Let's just say she pays as agreed. She says, okay, this is not my dad. <laughs> I need to start paying. 
And so she starts making payments of $396.83 a month. At the time I purchased the note, there were 312 payments remaining. So she will pay me a total of $123,811 in payments, plus an additional $8,800 in back payments. So all total, she will pay me $132,600. And that's what my $47,500 investment will have grown to. Now, I bought that inside an IRA. Okay, think about that for a minute. Take $47,500 in from it, it, that you have in your retirement account, you buy this mortgage note, and your retirement account will grow every single month. And this is what I do, and this is what I teach other people to do. If they want to grow their retirement, this is a brilliant strategy. So what kind of a return is that? That works out to be an 11.2% return annualized. Is that a good return? Yes or no? Absolutely yes. I mean, right now, if you put $47,000 in the bank, you'll be lucky if they pay you 2%. Most banks are paying less than 1%. Think about that for a minute, too. I mean, it's really almost criminal what banks are paying. If I put $47,000 into a bank right now and they're paying me 1%, it would take me 11 years to earn as much interest as this mortgage will earn me in one year. Why wouldn't I do this? Well, I might not do this because who knows, maybe she won't pay me. We'll see in a minute how that would play out if she didn't pay me. But so that's option one. She could pay me as agreed. Option two, she may pay me off early. And how would that look? Well, let's just say she makes payments for five years, has another baby, decides she needs a bigger house, sells the house, pays off her lender, which is me. Here's how that would look. Over the five years, she will have paid me 60 payments. That's five years of payments of $396, right? That means she will have paid me $23,800 in payments. She would still owe me $56,700. And she would also owe me $8,800 in arrearages. I'm not going to just let that disappear. So all total, when she pays me off, I will have earned $89,300 on my $47,500 investment. And I would have done it in five years. That's an average of 20.3% per year. That is huge, guys, huge. Where do you invest money and earn 20% safely? I don't know, but I can tell you that you can do it here, okay? And I know what you're thinking, but Dizzy, Dizzy, sometimes people have trouble. They don't pay. What if she doesn't pay? Well, let me tell you how that would look if she doesn't pay. Remember that little document called the mortgage. The mortgage says, if you don't pay, I get to take your house. So let me show you how that would play out. Now, obviously we don't know when she would stop paying, but let's just say again, she pays for five years. And then at, after making 60 payments, she stops making payments. What am I to do? Well, I can foreclose. I don't have to foreclose. I can do all kinds of other things too. I could ask her to just sign the house over and walk away in order to keep her credit clean. I could give her a couple thousand bucks and say, move out. They call that cash for keys. I could take the payments that she missed, put them on the back end of the loan and let her start paying again. Or I could foreclose. There are even other things I can do. Those are all called exit strategies. But let's just say worst case scenario, I have to foreclose because that's usually the last resort, right? After you've tried everything else, you foreclose. So. Five years from now, she stops paying. Well, over the five year period, as I said earlier, I would have collected $23,800. Then I foreclose. I have to pay an attorney about 2,000, maybe 3,000 bucks to foreclose. So I write a check, $3,000. The attorney handles it, lets me know, hey, Desi, the house has been foreclosed. It's now your house. So now I own a house at that point. This house is in Georgia, just north of Atlanta, okay? So now I own a house in Georgia. And at that point, I call up my real estate agent and I say, hey, agent, sell the house. The agent sells the house. Remember, the house is worth $130,000. So I, the agent sells the house. And let's just say I have to pay my agent. I subtract out my attorney's fees and all that. 
from the sale. So now I wind up with $115,000 in cash. Let's just say. I know it's more than that, but I'm just trying to be conservative. Out of the $130,000, I get $115,000 in cash. I've already collected $23,800 in payments. So all total, I would have collected $138,800 over, let's just say, five and a half years or so. That works out to be a 28% annual return. It goes from good to better to fabulous. I mean, that is why banks do what they do. Let me show you the actual results of what's going on with that particular asset right now. As I said, when I called the daughter, I reached out to her and I said, I'm not your daddy. She started making payments and I put her on a payment plan to start catching up the arrearages too. So now what she's paying me now is $396.83 per month for the mortgage. She's also paying an additional $310 per month to catch up those back payments. So I'm collecting $706 each month on a $47,000 investment, $47,500 which works out to be almost 18% cash on cash return. Come into my mailbox every single month. Dude, it just doesn't get any better than this. This is one of my notes. I have almost 50 of these. And every single month, I buy another one or two. You can too. You just have to know how to do this. This is such a fabulous way to do things, to do business. Now you understand why banks don't flip houses, right? Now you understand why banks don't buy rental houses or stocks or mutual funds or Bitcoin or none of that stuff. Banks don't invest. The reason banks don't invest is because investing is risky and banks are risk averse. Banks lend. You see, because as a lender, you're in control. You get to control the cash flow. Now, what do I mean by that? All businesses need cash flow to stay afloat, but most businesses can't control their cash flow. They don't know when their customers are going to show up. They don't know when their clients are going to pay. They hope they pay. They hope they show up. With banks, they control it. If you borrow money from a bank, they tell you when you must pay. Your payment is due on the 5th. Okay? They control the cash flow. Banks also minimize risk. They say to you, if you don't pay your payment on the 5th, First of all, we're going to hit you with a late charge. If you take too long to pay, we're not going to accept your payment. We're going to take your property. And that is how they minimize their risk. The third thing that banks do is they control their return on investment. I mean, if you put your money in a stock market, you can't control what kind of a return you're going to make. You hope you make a profit. You could lose money. Banks position themselves so that losing money is almost not a possibility. Think about this. If they want their dollars to earn 9%, what do they do? They just say, hey, if you want to borrow money from us, your interest rate is 9%. I mean, it's such a great business model. Why aren't we all copying what banks do? You see, I'm showing you here today that you can earn profits from real estate without owning it. You don't have to buy real estate to make money from real estate. Banks do it every single day. Banks make money from golf courses. They don't own golf courses. Banks make money from shopping centers. They don't own shopping centers. Why own the property? You can get the cash flow without owning the property. You just have to understand the business and how to do it. I call it a brilliant way to invest. My website is Invest Brilliantly. You can actually learn this stuff. I coach people on how to do this. Or if you want a partner, I'll partner with you on your first deal or two or, or whatever. If you want to get involved in this, I'm an investor. I'm not a guru. That's what I do. I invest and I help other people to invest. I show people how to invest. And I show you how to invest in this asset class because in my opinion, I think this is the best investment that's available for us. It certainly is the safest and it certainly is one of the most profitable and it certainly is one of the most passive. So, I mean, if you just want mailbox money coming in every month, and you don't want to have to worry about toilets breaking or tenants leaving or insurance expiring or none of that stuff, then this is such a fabulous way to invest. So that's my story, guys. It's intriguing, isn't it?
Well, I found out about this seven years ago. And when I did, I started getting rid of all my bricks and mortar. And today I don't own any houses as rentals and I don't flip houses anymore. But I have cash flow coming in every single month. And since I buy another note, every at least one every single month, it's not a, a month where I don't earn more money that month than I did the month before. And I now show other people how to do exactly what I'm doing. If you're interested in that, you can schedule a consultation with me. I even did develop a small course and I have a coaching program that I will offer to a real investor. I don't offer them to wannabes, but if you're a real investor and you say, I want to learn how to do this, I'm happy to teach you this stuff. Okay. Happy to do it. All I ask you to do is do your, do your first deal with me. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Schedule a time to talk to me. I'll show you how to do this. Or if you don't want to do it, don't do it. I don't really care. But if you want to learn how to do this, I'm happy to show it to you. Okay. Again, my name is Desi Arnaz. I am a professional investor and I sure do hope that you'll reach out to me because I can guarantee you, you will not regret it. And I can also guarantee you, you will thank me one day for turning you on to this fabulous investment space. God bless you and uh, be safe out there. Guys.